happy Wednesday. Wednesday is sometimes called hump day. Thank God for allowing us to make it through another week. Won't you come on? Won't you come on? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank God for this Wednesday, August the 25th. And God is good all the time and all the time God is good. You will, I'm delighted to greet you in the matches and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Allow me to go ahead now and make some announcements. Let me um, invite you to our Bible study tonight. Join us for Bible study tonight. We're studying the book of Romans. And tonight we will be talking about justification by faith. Justification by faith. We know that the great doctrines of the church found in the book of Romans. And the Bible says, study show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Again, I thank those of you who joined us for our annual picnic, but also those of you who press your way in the storm for our worship experience on Sunday. We did have some water damage to our sanctuary and, and the roof and the upper area, um, but that will not keep us from worshiping. I'm hoping to get that all resolved. Well, not totally resolved, but we'll get it fixed and we will be having worship on Sunday. So let's come and just thank God for bringing us through the storm. And my subject will be how to manage in the storm, how to negotiate a storm. So you wanna meet us on Sunday at 1045 for the word that God has laid on my heart. And it's consistent with what we're going through right now because when we came into this pandemic season, we met a storm. And now I think with the um, Delta variant, we are now in the midst of a shipwreck. And so we're gonna be preaching from that context, in that context on Sunday out of Acts chapter 27. I hope that you will join us for that. And um, let's just continue to love one another. I wanna encourage you that if you've not gotten vaccinated to consider getting vaccinated. One of the vaccinations now have met with um, FDC approval, but we know that the people that are in hospital and that are getting gravely ill are those who have not been vaccinated. I mean, I, I can't really understand the vac vaccine hesitancy. Um, I, I don't understand the disparities. I don't understand the misinformation, but it's my job as the shepherd. Um, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd to try to keep us together and to try to keep us safe. They even now understand, which they didn't know before, that if you're pregnant, that you should get vaccinated because that will also protect your baby. And the pregnant women who are not vaccinated, who come down with COVID, put their lives in jeopardy and the lives and the life of their unborn child. Listen, I read the news, I follow the data because and the science, and I listen to the voice of God because it's my desire that we should be safe. Jesus says that it's God's desire that none should be lost. Jesus says, other sheep I have of this foe, them I must also bring with me. And so I wanna encourage you in that vein. Let me go ahead and greet some of you. I'm glad that you're joining me and I'm getting ready to give you this word that God has placed in my heart today. Good afternoon, Valerie, thank you. Sister Cora Powell. Dina, how are you? Let's talk soon. Sister Ruba Ramsey, Reginald, join us for Bible study. I haven't seen you in Bible study in a while. I don't mean to put you on blast. Richard Fagan, how are you? Patricia Franklin, my good friend. Sister Jacqueline Wallace, how are you? I don't remember seeing you yesterday. I hope all is well with you and yours. Sister Mary Lawrence, Sister Virginia Chainer, Sister Maxine Bell, good to see you. Thank you always for your inspirational messages. Sister Angela Kelly, I hope you're feeling better. I know that you were not feeling well. We are gonna be praying for you. Sister Beverly Ward, good to see you. Okay, let's go to the word. You know, we've been studying out of the book of Peter and um, we, you know what, we are going to be able to finish the book of Peter between now and Friday. It's only five chapters. Yesterday we finished chapter, um, we finished chapter three. 
And so I just want to give the last verse of chapter three and go right into chapter four, which I think speaks to us even in a time like this. Um, yesterday in chapter, chapter three, we concluded that first of all, that God um, sits on the right hand and he has all authority and he makes intercessions for us. It says, um, and let me go with um, verse 21b, right? First, verse 21b, it says, it saved you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We're saved because Jesus died and God rose him from the dead with all our sins. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, chastised our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Who has gone into the heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. Colossians reminds us that in all things he must have the preeminence because he is before all things and in him all things things consist. So Peter has us to understand that. And then in chapter four, we're going to go through verses one through 11 very, very quickly. He says, because he has all power and because all authority, all angels and principalities are subjected to him and he sits at the right hand of the father, he says, therefore, that's a conjunctive word, because of what has happened, Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourself with the same attitude because whoever suffers in the body is done with sin. As a result, they do not live the rest of their earthly lives for human desires, but rather for the will of God. Let me unpack that for you. When you suffer and God brings you through, you know that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, where would you be? You know that it was not your friends, it was not your money, it was not the material things that you had, but it was God that brought you through. And as a consequence, you continue to look for the Lord, for, for the joy that only comes with a relationship with God. And so we no longer live the rest of our lives desiring evil human desires, but rather we look to God because every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. As I get older, I look to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of my faith. And then, look, we are different, you know, and that's okay. No, I'm not like you. I don't act like you. I don't talk like you. I don't behave like you. I don't have a negative disposition like you because I'm different. Paul puts it this, I mean, Peter, Peter puts it this way. He says, for you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans chose to do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing around, and detestable idolatry. We don't do those things anymore. There was a time that, you know, yeah, we used, you know, used to party and get ready. When we party, we drink McCarty. It's on my roof, 100 proof. You know, um, we used to say there's no sin in Seagram's Gin. People did all kinds of things, you know, and all of us were ain't before we became a saint. But now we do not do those things. The way I used to walk, I don't walk no more. The way I used to talk, I don't talk no more. There's a great change since I've been born. I was in the car service place yesterday. The woman was just so rude to me. But I tried to give her love and kindness. I did say to the service representative when I got to her, you know, you need to hire people who know how to behave a little more kinder with their customers. I'm just sharing this with you because I come out of a sales background. Um, but we are different. And Peter reminds us that we're different. In Peter chapter 2, verse 9, we talked about, he says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. We are somebody that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Yes, we are different. Let me move on. And then don't worry about those people that seem to be having all of the fun. 
because in the end, God will judge. Here it is. Peter gives us this. Uh, I, I think I'm going to preach out of this, this, this passage. Uh, I see a sermon coming right now. He says, but they will have to give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. But this is the reason the gospel was preached even to those who are now dead. Those who did not listen to the gospel of Jesus Christ are now dead so that they might be judged according to human standards in regard to the body. But live according to God in regards to the spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that allows us to do that that God is calling us to do. I close now. And the Apostle Peter closed here verses 7 through 11. He says, the end of all things are near. And you know what? I used to be worried about, you know, when the world will end. People say these are the last days. I don't worry about that anymore because it doesn't really matter. Because nobody knows when the world will end and when God will come. But we do know this, that life as we know it on this side of the Jordan will end. So whether the world ends, we will end. Because it appointed to man once to die and then the judgment. And so whether the, end, the world ends or whether we end, be assured that the end of all things are near. Man's days are three score and ten. If, if by reason of schedule, they, if by reason of measure, they be four score, yet is there much labor and sorrow. He says, therefore, because the end is near, be alert and sober mind and of sober mind so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sin. Didn't know where that was, but I've heard it said so many times, but it's in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8, that love covers a multitude of sin. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speak, they should do so as one who speaks the very word of God. If anyone serve, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. I close with the Apostle Peter. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear God, for this time together, we give you thanks. And for your word that's so pregnant with truth and power that it gives birth while we yet try to understand it. Thank you for this word today that reminds us that we can find strength in suffering. Thank you for this word that reminds us that we are different because we have been chosen a royal priesthood, holy nation acceptable unto God. Help us not to be worried about others, knowing that God will judge. Then help us to live well and love each other deeply. Help us to be kind to one another without complaining and use whatever gifts that you've given us to serve one another to the end that Jesus Christ might be praised to the glory of God our Father and to him be glory. Keep us now in your care Grant us strength for the rest of the journey. We thank you, we praise you, we honor you, and we give you glory. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to continue. We only have like, so between tomorrow and Friday, we would have walked through this wonderful passage, this wonderful epistle that teaches us how to live as Christians and how to endure suffering. That word, I'm understanding this even better in this season, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. God bless you. Have a wonderful afternoon. Know that God loves you and so do I. And that there's nothing that can happen to you that we together with God cannot handle. Let's receive the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance, grant you his peace and his love 
and you're going in and then you're going out and you're down sitting and you're uprising till we shall stand in his presence through Jesus the Christ, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. God bless you. How are you, Leroy? How are you, Sister Deborah? And how are you, Melody? And all of you, Sister Ann Hamid, good to see all of you. Angela Thornton, some of you I didn't get to give a shout out before, but I'm glad to see you. Listen, join us tonight. If you don't have the prompts for our Bible study, you want to join us for our Bible study. And I'm going to let you go, and I'm going to get back to work. Again, God loves you, and so do I. And there's nothing that can happen to us that we together with God cannot handle. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>